created using Powtoon. This is a tutorial on how to use the new Jumble feature within Kahoot. When you go into Kahoot, you will now see that you have a new game type called Jumble. You still have your regular game types. Jumble is a, a new game type where the users need to sequence the answers in a specific order. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Jumble, and it will ask me to put in some basic information about a title and an audience. I'll go ahead and put that in. You can see that I've added a, a title, a description. You do need to pick the audience. You can also credit your resources if you used videos or um, pictures and you want to cite the sources. You also can add an introductory video or a cover image. I'm just going to keep it stock and I'm going to go ahead and say OK Go. And then it's going to bring me to my creator where I'm going to create my question. So in this case I'm going to click on the circle to add a jumble question. And you can see that it will ask for the question where we can add an image and put in our answers. I'm going to go ahead and put in a question. So list the steps of the scientific method according to the graphic. You can set your time limit from 20 seconds to 120 seconds. I'm going to put mine at 2 minutes. If you don't want this to be a competition, you can turn the awarding of points off for each question. That way you're just looking at formative data and taking the, the competitive nature away if, you're, if your students cannot handle that. You do have to do four answers in a jumble, and the answers have to be in the order that they are expected to be correct. So I'll you know, put my, my answers in here. You can see I've put my four answers in order. I can also add an image. So in this case, I'm going to add an image. So you see how to add an image. So I'm going to click on the Add Image, and it's going to search my computer. And I have an image here that I had used the snipping tool to create this image. And I'm going to just double click to bring it in, and it will bring in this image so I can have it here. If I need to credit sources for a specific question, I can. And then what you'll do is you'll click Next, and then you would start to add your second question, your third question, and so on, until you have all your questions set up. I'm going to add a couple questions right now. You can see that I've added three questions at this point. I can continue to add more if need be. In order to reorder these, you can hold down on the group of dots and just drag your questions into a, a new order. If you need to edit a question, you simply click on the pencil. If you want to duplicate a question, you can click on the copy icon. Or if you need to delete one of the questions, you can click on the trash can. You can also change the time limit for your questions if you need to, anywhere from 5 seconds up to 2 minutes. When you are done with all of your questions, you simply click Save. And then you have some choices. You can edit it, preview it, play it, or share it. Or you can say that I'm done and it'll take you back to your main Kahoot area. We're going to go ahead and preview it so that you can see what this will look like from a teacher-student perspective. When we're in preview mode, what you'll see on the left-hand side is what the students will see up on the screen. And over on the right-hand side is just a sample of what the students would see on their devices. We're going to go ahead and we are going to see what this looks like from a user's perspective and from the teacher perspective. So I'm going to click on Classic. It's going to give me a pin that, so the students would enter this pin and click Enter. And it'll enter a nickname. Just remember as a teacher you can always remove unwanted names by simply by highlighting and clicking the name and asking the user to log back in again. Go ahead and click Start. Again, this is what this, the users will see up on the screen that you're projecting. Here is what they'll see on their own device. And so list the steps of the scientific method according to the graphic. So you'll see your four answer choices here, and the students will see their four answer tiles that they need to drag into the proper order. So I'm going to go ahead and drag these in as observation, hypothesis, and then experiment and conclusion. When I have all my choices in the order that I prefer, I click on the blue circle with a K in it 
to submit my answers. And then it'll let me know whether I got it right or wrong. I'll go ahead and click Next. Do my next question, list the answers from least to greatest using x equals 2. So again, here are my answer choices. Here are my tiles that I would drag into order. So I'm going to do x minus 2 is 0, then x, and 5 minus x, and 2x. Check my answers by clicking on the circle. Again, they're right. Click Next. List the presidents in serving order. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and drag these into a random order. So you can see that when I do check, it will give students immediate feedback whether they're right or wrong. When you're done, you simply click End, and then you can do to get results. And you can either save your results as a direct download, or you can save them directly into your Google Drive. This is a great tool to use for formative assessment, but then you can also use it as you download the results to find out individual data in case you need to help specific students with any type of remediation on the content. So, hope you enjoy using Jumble. If you have any questions, please contact your ITRT. Thank you.